So go ahead and take your Bibles. We're going to be back in the book of Proverbs. Book of Proverbs. Chapter number four. Book of Proverbs, chapter number four. Just going to go ahead and read one verse here to springboard us this morning. Proverbs chapter number four, verse number seven. Proverbs 4, 7. The Bible says this. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. Let's pray. Our Father in God, we thank you again for the opportunity we have to be here in your house, Father, to be able to just gather together, to be able to open up your word, Father, to learn more about you, to draw closer to, to you. We ask, Father, that you'd be with us here during the Sunday school hour, God, that, uh, uh, God, that you, your spirit would work, Father, that you would guide and direct us, Father, that you, would, that you would draw us closer to yourself, that we might learn something more about you, Father, how, uh, how we, we might please you in our, in our walk. God, we just pray that uh, you would bless this time that we have together. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. So a couple of weeks ago, if you, for those of you that may not remember or may, may not have been here, uh, we talked a little bit about kind of an introduction to the book of Proverbs. Um, I had mentioned that it's not very often that you hear preaching out of the book of Proverbs unless it usually deals with uh, the Proverbs 31 woman, um, maybe a couple of Proverbs here, here or there, um, but I can count on, on one hand the number of times that I've heard a message based out of the book of Proverbs uh, in my nearly 30 years of, of being, being in church. Um, and we talked about this introduction to uh, Proverbs in the sense of uh, wisdom itself, how, how uh, uh, we are to be wise people, how we are to uh, have wisdom. And just uh, by way of review, uh, we talked about the importance that God places on wisdom here in verse number seven of chapter four, uh, kind of sums it up. The Bible says wisdom is the principal thing. God does not think that wisdom is just a good thing or that it's a, you know, one of the best things, or it should be really high on our priority list to obtain. He says wisdom is the principal thing. And as we go uh, uh, and talk about wisdom, we have to remember as well that, that we are assuming something right off the bat. We are assuming that uh, if you're seeking after true wisdom, God's wisdom, that you have also accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. You are a believer in Christ. You have had your sins forgiven, and you are, uh, and you are a saved individual. So wisdom is the principal thing. Uh, and the, and the uh, thought of wisdom's importance, we discussed also uh, God's meeting with Solomon. If you uh, remember that story uh, in 1 Kings chapter 3, David has just passed uh, off the scene. He has just died, and Solomon has been crowned king, and God appears to Solomon in a dream, and he says, Solomon, ask me whatever you want. I will give you the one thing that you want the most. Just ask me for whatever it is that you want, and Solomon says, Lord, I, I'm a child, I, and I'm supposed to be judge over your people. I'm supposed to rule over them, Give me a wise and understanding heart. And God says, hey, because you've asked for wisdom, because you asked for a wise and understanding heart, and you didn't ask for riches or for long life or for your enemies to, to be brought into your hand, because you haven't asked for these other things, not only am I going to give you wisdom and an understanding heart, I'm going to give you these other things too. And we see throughout the life of Solomon, though he certainly... Uh, had times in his life of foolishness. We see that in the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, just kind of what Solomon went through when he, when, when he was going through his foolish period. Uh, but we see the wisdom of God through Solomon uh, throughout his life, and we see that Solomon becomes the greatest of all uh, kings to ever walk the earth, the richest of all kings to ever walk the earth, the wisest of all kings to ever walk the earth. Um, and, and we see God putting that importance there. Uh, in Proverbs chapter 3 as well, uh, God describes 
uh, the importance of, of wisdom, the merchandise being better than the merchandise of silver and the gain of f- more than fine gold, more precious than rubies. Uh, length of days is in her right hand and her ways are ways of pleasantness and all her paths are peace. So God pl- places a premium on wisdom itself. And so if God thinks that wisdom is this important, we as children of God should put a premium on wisdom as well and seek, uh, uh, seek wisdom with all of our hearts and seek God's wisdom. We also saw the accessibility to wisdom uh, and how, how we are able to obtain it. And wisdom is probably one of the simplest things that God gives, uh, gives us access to. Uh, in James chapter 1, verses 5 and 6, James writes, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. But let him ask in faith nothing wavering, for he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For wisdom, uh, we need to come to God and, and simply ask him. We need to, he wants us to ask him for his wisdom. He makes it very simple, just, uh, just as simple as salvation is. Uh, we, come to, we come to God, we, we ask in faith, uh, for, for him to save us through the blood of Jesus Christ. It's just as simple for us to obtain wisdom. We go to God and we ask him in faith, Lord, give me wisdom. Please, I need wisdom. So he makes it very, uh, uh, it's, it's something that is super important to God, but he also makes it uh, uh, very accessible to the believer to obtain. We also went over the benefits of wisdom through Proverbs chapter uh, 1, the first, the first several verses of Proverbs chapter 1, and we talked about uh, the different aspects of the benefits of wisdom that God gives to us, uh, knowledge, uh, perception, and understanding, uh, to be able to receive the word of God, discretion, uh, that uh, knowledge would be uh, ever increasing, and the ability to interpret or rightly divide the word of truth. And lastly, we discussed the key to wisdom, the key to it all uh, uh, through the book of Proverbs. And that was that phrase, the fear of the Lord. Proverbs 1, 7 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Um, and we discussed that there were 10 fear of the Lord's mentioned in the book of Proverbs, which is interesting because uh, if we, we think about it, there were 10 commandments given to Israel. There are 10 fear of the Lord's in the book of Proverbs. 10, uh, uh, it tends to be the number of law or government found within the word of God. And so I don't believe that there's any coincidence there. There are 10 fear of the Lord's in the book of Proverbs. Uh, again, uh, Proverbs 1-7, fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Uh, Proverbs 8-13, fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Proverbs 9-10, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Uh, Proverbs 10-27, the fear of the Lord prolongeth days. Proverbs 14, 26 and 27, the fear of the Lord is strong confidence and the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. Proverbs 15, 33, the fear of the Lord is the instruction of wisdom. Proverbs 16, 6, uh, by mercy and truth, iniquity is purged and by the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. Proverbs 19, 23, the fear of the Lord tendeth to life. And Proverbs 22, 4, by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches, honor, and life. That brings us to today. Um, So after teaching that Sunday school lesson a couple of weeks ago, uh, and I hope that if you hadn't already been in the book of Proverbs daily, I hope that since then uh, that you have been and that you've been striving to read at least a proverb a a day to coincide with our calendar. But since since that time, uh, I was actually reading Proverbs chapter 3, um, a couple of weeks ago, and going over that passage of Scripture uh, that we initially talked about, uh, the, some of the benefits uh, and the importance of, of wisdom, and I saw something that I hadn't noticed prior, and I wanted to, kind of as a springboard from that last lesson, to bring it up here today. Let's go ahead and look at Proverbs chapter 3 and verse number 12. There's something that stood out to me, and I want to see if it stands out to you as well. Uh, so keep your eyes peeled uh, to see if anything might stand out from this passage of Scripture. So Proverbs chapter 3, verse number 12. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth understanding. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies, and all the things thou canst desire are not to be compared unto her. 
Length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Her ways are ways of pleasantness, and all her paths are peace. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is every one that retaineth her. Now, looking through that passage of Scripture, is there anything that jumps out at anybody here? Uh, is there anything that jumps out at you right off the bat as we read that passage of Scripture? I'm going to kind of open, open the floor here to see if there's uh, any ideas, any, any, any guesses as to what, at least to me, jumped out from that passage of Scripture. Yeah. Uh, wisdom, yeah, wisdom is always personified as a woman. That, that's, not, that's not what I was referring to, but yes. But yeah, she is, she is personified as a woman. And actually that happens uh, a, a few times in the book of Proverbs uh, where she's kind of, w- wisdom is kind of given in the feminine idea. Um, I don't necessarily know what that means, but that, that is what happens. And anything else that might stand out in this passage of Scripture as well? That is something that, that is a good thing to, to notice though because it does happen regularly in the book of Proverbs. All right, so here's what stood out to me. Let's look at verse number uh, 13 once again. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and the man that getteth wisdom, or the man that getteth understanding, excuse me. And let's skip down to verse number 18. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is every one that retaineth her. Do we see it there? No, it's not tree of life. I want to point out the word happy. Notice that in these five verses, happy is repeated twice. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. When God repeats something within, within Scripture, he's usually trying, he's trying to draw our attention to it. He doesn't repeat something just to let it go. And reading this passage of Scripture a couple of weeks ago, I, I looked was reading through that, and I noticed I, it just jumped out at me for some reason. Why would happy be repeated in this passage of Scripture? What is it that God is trying to point out to us that he would have to repeat it twice in five verses? Well, we talked about this a couple of months ago a little bit, that obviously the, the, the Bible that we have today um, in English, the original manuscripts weren't in English. The Bible was not written in English. It was translated in English, uh, in our King James English, first in 1611. But before that, the original manuscripts, the Old Testament was written in two languages, Hebrew and Aramaic, a couple of chapters written in Aramaic. New Testament was written in Greek. We discussed uh, the Greek language when we went over John chapter 21, the uh, three, uh, lovest thou me more than these, that uh, Jesus and Peter has that conversation on. So the Old Testament is written in mostly Hebrew with a couple chapters in Aramaic. So the book of Proverbs was written in Hebrew. And when you translate one language to another, especially when you translate into what we discussed before, into a technical language like English, some things can be lost in translation. And you have to go in and go back to the original language to see what the author might have meant. So there are twice where the word happy is used in Proverbs 3, verses 13 through 18. What do we learn in the Hebrew? Well, let's start off in verse number 13. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. That word happy is the Hebrew word esher, and that literally means happiness or blessedness. Now, stick your finger here. Let's go ahead and go to the book of Psalms, Psalm number 1. The very first psalm, psalm number one and verse number one, and we'll see the same word used here. Psalm one, verse one, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and day. And night. That word blessed is that same word esher that we see translated as happy in Proverbs 3, verse number 13. The word, uh, uh, this word happy or blessed um, doesn't give the same connotation that we think of as happiness in our American society today. We think uh, when we talk about happiness um, in our society today, we are generally talking about a, a, an inward emotion that is brought on by outward circumstances. 
Oh yeah, I had a good day today at work, so I'm happy. Oh yeah, my uh, family's doing well. My family's healthy. We've got food on the table. We've got a roof over our head. Uh, we're having a, you know, having a great time. I'm happy. Uh, um, it's something that, that, it's an emotion that we, that can many times change with, within a blink of an eye. Um, this word happy is not referring to that. This word happy, sure or blessed, would be, the New Testament equivalent to that would be that of joy. A Christian, a believer, should be joyful. Now, does that mean if I'm joyful or I, or I, I have the joy of the Lord, does that mean I'm always going to be smiling? Does that mean I'm always going to be happy-go-lucky? Does that mean that, that, that nothing is ever going to go wrong in my life? No. But it is an it is a, a, a um, act of faith that is not that is not determined by what's going on the uh, outward circumstances, but by what God has done in my life and what God is doing in my life. Things may not go right. In fact, for somebody to live the Christian life, for somebody to walk with God, there are going to be a lot of times where things do not go right. Jesus promised that they that will live godly shall suffer persecution. Just look, at, just look at the prophets, for example. Elijah was probably the greatest prophet of the Old Testament, arguably so. Look at his life, the ups and downs of his life. There was a time where he even wanted to quit because Jezebel said that she was going to kill him. But yet God was always with him. It didn't mean his life was uh, his life was easy. <coughs> Excuse me. The prophet Jeremiah. There's a man that did not have a, a happy ministry uh, as we think about it. Zero converts, thrown in jail, threatened with death, taken and kidnapped and brought to Egypt, gets back to Israel, taken over by Babylon. He did not have happiness as we would think about it here in America. But he was following God. He got to the point where he wanted to quit at times. But he was following God, and the joy of the Lord was his strength. It doesn't mean that things are always going to go right. It doesn't mean that things are always going to go well. But what it does mean, that blessedness, that happiness, that joy that comes from God, is that no matter my circumstance, God is with me. God is with me. <coughs> so, happy is the man that findeth wisdom and the man that getteth understanding. If we're talking about, <coughs> excuse me, if we're talking about the wisdom of God that we're seeking, we can again compare it here to Psalms number one, blessed or happy or joyful is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly. In Jewish society of the day, to walk with somebody was to be a student of. It was to be somebody who you are, you are going to learn from somebody else. I'm going to walk with you and you are going to teach me. Blessed is man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, that does not walk with ungodly uh, wisdom, ungodly foolishness with ungodly teachings and or nor standeth in the way of sinners if you were standing you were you were you were uh, uh what's the word you were ensconced you were there you were you were confirmed as a student at that point you had a relationship with the teacher beforehand but now you are here and you are you are firmly implanted in that teaching you are, you are standing there listening to your teacher. So blessed is the man that walketh not or has a relationship in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of, sinner, way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. If you were sitting, you were the teacher. You're walking, you have that relationship. You're standing, you're ensconced in the, in the, in the teachings that, that, uh, they are, that they are giving to you. And if you're sitting, you're the one doing the teaching. So blessed is the man that is not in the counsel of the ungodly that is not in the teachings uh, of, of the sinners. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse number two, but his delight is where? His delight is where? I'll open it up. In the law of the Lord. And in his law doth he meditate day and night. So blessed or happy or joyful is the man whose delight is in the law of the Lord. 
If we're looking for the wisdom of God, where are we going to find it? In the word of God. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom and getteth understanding. We cannot find wisdom apart from the scriptures. We cannot find wisdom apart from the word of God. And the only way that we can obtain that happiness, that blessedness, that joyfulness was from within the word of God. He makes it so accessible to us, such a simple way for us to, to obtain his wisdom. Ask for it, be in the word of God. So happy is the man that findeth wisdom. Esher, blessedness, happiness, joyfulness. Now let's go ahead and go down to verse number 18. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her, and happy is everyone that retaineth her. Now, if this was the same Hebrew word, this would be a, a super simple lesson. In fact, this is actually a different Hebrew word that is used for happy. One of those things that we lose in translation. We see happy twice. The word is translated, the, 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 two, the two words are translated that way. But unless you dig into the language, you won't see it. So hap, the first happy is esher, happiness, blessedness. This happy, this happiness, happy is everyone that retaineth her, that holds on to wisdom, that keeps wisdom. That word, very similar, ashar. So we have esher, blessedness, happiness, joyfulness. Ashar, happy is the one that retains wisdom, that keeps wisdom, that holds on to wisdom. That word means to go straight, to walk, to go on, to advance, or to make progress. It gives the idea of being on a pathway, walking the correct way. That sounds awfully familiar, doesn't it? Psalm 119, 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Not only if we are seeking God's wisdom and finding God's wisdom and understanding, and we are in the word of God, are we happy? Are we blessed? Are we joyful? Even when things go wrong, when things aren't going our way, we still have that joy of the Lord. That, uh, we have the faith to follow him because we know that, uh, that, uh, that uh, we can rely on him. Not only are we happy, blessed, joyful, but as we seek the wisdom of God, as we search through his word, as we delight in his word, as we meditate on it day and night, we are on the correct path and we are advancing and we are moving forward. We are going the way that he wants us to go. Because once again, Psalm 119, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Can we think about that for just, for, for, for just a moment? <clears throat> How as we are in the word of God, as we read it and as we understand it and as we apply it to our life, God is putting us on the path that we should go. Now, as sinners, as humans, we're obviously not perfect. And there are times where we want to go one hand or to, the, uh, to the, the right hand or to the left. We don't want to stick on that middle ground sometimes. But this will never lead us astray. We will lead ourselves astray plenty of times. I've done it so many times I can't even count. But this will not. We're in, this wor we're in the word of God. It will direct us. It will guide us. God uses it for us to be on the correct path. It is something that as we study it, we increase, we, we increase our faith. Actually, as we think, think about that, Romans chapter number 10. Romans chapter number 10. As Paul is writing to the Romans, he's writing about salvation. Uh, 
Uh, verse number nine, for example, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, thou shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Skip down to verse number 13. For, whoso, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 14, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah saith, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. As we are in the word of God, our faith is increased. Our, our walk and our relationship with God grows deeper and it grows closer. We find happiness, blessedness, joyfulness as we are walking down the path of righteousness, as we are walking down the path that God would have for us. We need to stick to the book. So, with that, we could, I mean, we could literally take the book of Proverbs. We, we could take just the, the idea of wisdom and spend weeks and months just on the idea of wisdom. But I hope that through a couple of weeks ago talking about kind of the, the, in, this introduction to Proverbs and through today talking about the blessedness, the happiness, and the pathway that God will lead us on, I pray that we will all be in this book more and more. It's an important book. It is God's wisdom book. And it's better to learn from somebody who has lived this wisdom better to learn from the person that gives, from the one that gives the wisdom than it is to learn the hard way. I'm sure we've all done it. We've all made, we've all made mistakes and experience is a hard taskmaster and a hard teacher. But if we can be in the word of God, if we can be in the book of Proverbs and learn from the wisdom that God has for us, then there are lessons in there that we can learn without having to experience it ourselves that we can teach others also. Our Father, we do thank you for everything that you do for us and just for this time that we have together. I pray, God, that you would help us to take into, uh, into our hearts, Father, just this idea of wisdom and your, your wisdom, Father, how that you make it accessible to us, uh, the importance that you place on it, Father, but the simplicity uh, of how we can obtain it and the, the happiness and the pathway that, it, that it'll take us on. Father, I just pray that you would be with us here today, be with the, the next service, for we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. amen. We're out a little